Today's episode's finished my sentence, dude. If you're not first, you're... <laughs> Second. <laughs> if you're not here, you're... If you're not here, you're there, dude. If you're not winning, you're... Eating. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of food, dude. We're sleeping. <laughs> Depressed. It's a delicate dance. We're on catch-up phase, bro. We're trying to set up everything. Like, perfect bar. 2024. How do you even plan, dude? Dude, welcome to the Cat and Cloud podcast. <laughs> it's 2024. Oh. Let's do that again because I slammed the cup in the background. Think they heard it? I don't know. Welcome. Well, my voice is coming back. I lost my voice over the New Year's uh, week. Party too week. hard. Nope, just sat with a guy who works with us uh, named Mark in a room and he had COVID <laughs> SARS. So I'm out with him for a whole week in a room and then, you know, decided to bite off a little bit and chew it up and swallow it. and let Breathing each other's air. What were you guys working on? Well, I was just opening my mouth, and he was breathing and talking to me through his mouth, and then I was breathing in his mouth air, and then I was, I was getting sick. <laughs> That's the only reason you were in the room, <laughs> yeah, just, just to breathe with breathe each, each other. other's air, dude. See no, how it goes. There's no work happening. No, just we were, breathing. We, we were we were interviewing um, many many amazing candidates, awesome people who work with Cat and Cloud for the marketing coordinator job as. The uh, almighty gene is moving on to live in the forest. I think that's in, mostly right, except yeah. for it's not marketing coordinator. Oh, yeah. I said marketing. Uh, wholesale coordinator. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he batted yeah, 95% there, 0. 0.950. So, yeah, that's what we were doing. It was a really fun time. We had a lot of good conversations, a lot of interesting interesting little tidbits. How'd you go into it? Did you prep anything? Or Yeah, we had some prep questions, and Mark was leading mostly, and then I was taking notes and listening, kind of giving feedback and then chiming in as well and asking some, some questions. The ones that I ended up mostly asking, well, I guess, I guess we worked together pregame and I added some like, you know, pointed questions to lean into all usually motivation based or, you know, in general motivation based questions, things that you ask that make people respond in ways that they would have to tell you how they might go about things or how they might think about things, not necessarily like, yes, no, I'm good at this for sure. You know, occasionally they need to, but um, that, yeah. that was my role. Yeah, I took a lot of notes and asked clarifying questions and maybe dug a little bit when I found something maybe interesting or that could be potentially telling based on the position. Interviewing's super fun. Interviewing's fun. Conversations are fun. I think I like interviewing a lot because you are trying to see it's almost like cupping at origin you're trying to see like what's below the surface a little bit you know and you kind of have to get there by your own way <laughs> like in learning and and it's really interesting interesting cupping at origin is different than that but that's what i always feel like is like you're you're looking for the potential and you're looking for you know like what's really going on in there <laughs> <laughs> not you just are skipping past the roast do you have any surprises yeah a lot of different surprises in terms of not necessarily, I think every interview had a kind of a surprise. And I always like to see what people either are driven by or the way that they think in terms of the job they have too. You know, because we had people who work in different roles in the roastery, different roles in the cafes, and they all have different responsibilities. And so it was, it was kind of cool to hear how they mentally approach work based on comparing that to like what they need to do every single day and how, you know, just how it might apply to the job as well as the job they currently have. So there's some, there's some feedback I want to give to some people and some encouragement on the other side of it. It's on my list of to do's to, to write them some stuff. But I found that super interesting in, in a lot of different ways. I mean, one of the candidates, I, you know, it's weird. They sit in a current job and I'm like, man, they could be really helpful in this other area sometime, someday, some way. Um, stuff that we currently might need. It could be really, really helpful, you know, and that's just something I like to log away and then, you know, stuff that you, myself and Charles or maybe some other leadership could talk about at times. It's like, hey, we might need some help here. What if we suggested that this person, you know, give it a, give it a goal, give it a go, see what happens, see if they could come up with something. You know, you have to, in my opinion, think outside of the confines of specific job descriptions only when you have these projects going on where there's no technical human who's like supposed to do the whole project. And there's not necessarily, you know, I'm not a pro, you're not a pro, Chuck's not a pro, maybe the head of the department's not a pro, maybe even the team leader's not a pro at the thing, but we do happen to have a pro at this thing sitting, you know, within the ranks and maybe they'd be interested in helping. Right. So even if you're not like finding 
if one certain person doesn't fit the bill for the position, you can discover some hidden talents that they have or some hidden yeah. passions that they have. I think or so. Some places in a, in where they might fit in. Yeah. Man. Resource management is weird in that way. I think a lot of people think of the concept of like human resources or, or like, you know, you're managing your business and you're thinking about, in my opinion, how to, you know, utilize your resources to do something awesome. And resources are, you know, monetary, they're people, they're the equipment you have, they're the products you use. Like they're all resources to achieve goals, yourself included as a resource. So it's like the internet, you know, there's, there's resources to use. <laughs> internet, I, I think dude. it's interesting. A lot of time people don't, um, they oftentimes don't, maybe in my opinion, see all the resources available or explore them maybe, or feel comfortable exploring them at times. Give me an example. Um, maybe the, well, maybe the con conceptually it'd probably be easier. It's like, if you have a goal to execute, you know, a project and you are in charge of it and you have all of these different things, like I said, you have a equipment, like whatever you have equipment and you need to, grind espresso you need to roast espresso we'll say you need to send it somewhere and you have all these variables within there it's like well i only have two people so i can only do this that and the other but maybe there's a way to look at how the day operates and change that so that you can be more efficient or maybe there's a way to like i said utilize somebody who by the way i'm i'm really good and i'm handy with mechanics maybe i could make sure that everything's tightened up and clean and working really well so we're all really accurate and everything moves well or, you know like that's where i'm going with that concept mm. And I think oftentimes we're just like, well, this is, this is how the day operates. And so like, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't work. You know, like, I don't know, we can't do that. There's nobody, there's no way to do it. And until you maybe do things like interview or you ask the questions or you, you see what is available or even just explore a little bit, you might not see, well, actually there's somebody right here who's perfect for doing exactly what I need help with right now. And I could literally ask them maybe maybe we could cha trade jobs for a couple hours will they do that for me and i do this for them and stuff like that you know trade focuses so i found i found that really interesting i wish that it was easier for like work to be variable in that way where it's like i i'm gonna pull you from aptos for 20 for like two weeks to go work on this project and you're going back and maybe it is possible but even that is like i love that concept of being able to have the freedom to like i said mess with the resources to get shit done yeah where yeah. would that why don't you <clears throat> well i think we have in some capacities and then i think at some point it comes down to learning to do it versus suggest it to maybe other people who are in charge of their places and or departments so there's some opportunity i think for myself to you know, that, right? Because there's a little bit of like trying to respect the positional authority that you give people to let them make calls in their own way versus just kind of stepping in and maybe bulldozing and just finding that balance might be the way to, as, as the consideration into why I, I wouldn't all the time. Mm. You know? Right, right, right. You specifically. Yeah, oh, why wouldn't a person? Right. Why wouldn't a person do that? Well, I guess that's part of the reason. The other part might be... Why wouldn't someone do that? It's an interesting question. Because the way I see it is most people, thinking inside the box for most people is not a conscious effort to right. ignore possibility. It's often a conscious effort to try to do a good job. Yeah, for where sure. Where if the organization is structured a certain way or the department is structured a certain way and we have a certain output and there's a certain framework for that. Output. Right. That's like all every, we know. Everybody has, you know, some sort of order of operations or SOPs or goals. And it's like, okay, cool. Like this is a known factor. Mm -hmm. If I plug this in here and plug this in here, the output is this, this is what the bosses told me that they want me to do. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Sure. And it's, which is fair, which is fair. Which yeah. is to I totally understand it. So the question is really like to create, the flexibility like that is like how do you build the curiosity that comes from something that feels one off like hosting an interview it's like oh i'll have a series of interviews when there's a high level position available so maybe you'll you know i mean for the position like you guys have interviewed for it's, that's hopefully not going to happen for another year or two yeah, you know yeah, that absolutely. that's not going to happen that often the uh, same thing the last interviews i did were with 
HR when we hired Leah, and it's like that's hopefully not going to happen for another mm-hmm. year or two too. Hopefully yeah, these yeah, are long ten years. Yeah. So those are good in in because I totally agree with you. Like through those interviews, you're getting to know people a little bit better. Fun, you're yeah. kind of seeing how they respond to certain things. And one of the things I like to do is this is a bit of a tangent, but I I care a little bit about their ideas. Mm-hmm. I care a little bit about how they answer questions, but I care more about what they've actually done. Mm-hmm. So you touched on this, and I think this is totally accurate. Yes or no questions, off the table. Never. You don't want to have yes or no questions because those are dead ends. Yeah, You say yes or you say no, and then the conversation is basically I'm over. Done. Um, how you think about something is cool too, but oftentimes how people think about something and what they do aren't correlated they're like i believe Mm. this i believe that but when it comes time to put rubber to the road they don't actually do what they believe right so i'm really interested in people showing me projects or telling me stories about when they did x right in great detail (laughs) yeah you know yeah and and really digging in and and feeling like oh yeah you know tell me about a project you did where you had to lead a a group of people oh yeah i had this this team and you know we we did a thing for school Uh, what was the thing yeah Oh, well, if, you know, we were creating a demonstration for yada, yada, yada. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it went really well. Like, what, what did you do? Oh, how, you know, I was part of the team. Like, what specifically did yeah, you do? Like, what part? literally did you do? Yeah. And those are, those are challenging questions for a lot of people because mm. most people, well, in my experience, in my experience in interviews, people are just trying to get out of them as soon as possible. Mm. Not just the person being interviewed, but specifically the person doing the interviewing. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. People... And I used to feel this way too. Like I felt really awkward asking questions yeah, and allowing enough silence for the person to think about it and process it. And Mm, I remember that it was really hard to resist the urge to jump in and save them. You know, Mm -hmm. if I asked you a question, you know, tell me about a time when you led a department and brought a new initiative to life. What did you learn in the process? What did it do for a company? Let's talk about it. Yeah. You're sitting there. Um, let me think about that. You know, to sit in silence for thirty seconds or a minute, if it takes mm-hmm. it that long for that person to, you know, to get the gears turning, that's that's a challenge. Yeah, that was and, that was a challenge at first. And then poking and putting all the pressure, for lack of a better term, on this other person also kind of feels a little unnatural to me too. Even though I enjoy yeah. what happens when it comes from it, so that does. It's, it's kind of cool practice. to dig in there and, and let people. Sit on it. Talk for a about minute. what they've done, yeah, and, and give them the, the the time to process. Mm-hmm. All that to say, where I was going with that is, in day to day work, how do you create a culture, or the challenge could be to create a culture where you're training people more or less, or cr- adding a cultural value that allows them to kind of engage their curiosity more often than not. Not right. only when it's time to interview, but on the day-to-day. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, How are we learning about the people that we're working with? Because how much of a shame is it if you would working for someone, you've been working with someone for six months, one year, two years, and then on the third year, you discovered that they had some amazing talent that right. you could have been utilizing the whole time and would have been super fun for them to utilize, but mm. because you don't have a deeper relationship or you don't have this good communication, it was just this sitting there as this unknown, yeah. this unknown thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I you, you asked, like, why why wouldn't you know somebody explore? And I, I totally agree. At the beginning, you would probably say, well, you know, I was taught to do this like this, so that's right. how I do it. I would say, you know, one of the first steps is to opening up the dialogue, at least starting with your core leaders of whatever you're talking about, whatever department, whatever project, saying, hey, you know, like, here's where we're going, here's what we'd like to see done. And then I think what I would, and what I think I've been coaching, right, is that first uh, perspective, which is what are the resources that you have available to ensure that you're able to or attempting to hit these goals clearly and a hundred percent not part of them and find out what works and what doesn't is like that portion. But I think if you are the leader in these places, what you might do, right, is include your team in the process. Meaning like you're not necessarily always asking them for how you do it. You're simply starting by saying, 
here's the project we're working on together. And here's what I'm in charge of and what I'm working towards figuring out, whatever it might be. And doing your best to paint a clear picture of what the end goal looks like and through the process of starting, then you got to give them the starting place because you're the leader. Like, hopefully that's, that's how you would do it. You're like, hey, I'm in charge of this. Here's where we're going to start. Here's my current plan. Then through that process, that's, I think, your perfect opportunity to your point is ask people how it's going. Is there anything you think could be going better? Is there anything that would help, you know, team member X do the job better, cleaner, faster? Is anything keeping them from doing, from getting it done at all? You know, and, and then that opens up at least the dialogue between the team to hopefully, if nothing else, just have a conversation. And at best though, the person becomes comfortable enough to start sharing their ideas. And when you start hearing ideas, then it's even easier to start asking questions like, whoa, where'd you learn that? Or where'd, that, where'd you come up with that? Oh, well, it turns out, you know, I know I just started working here, but I actually have led a team of 60 people. And, mm. you know, I actually have a ton of ideas about this. And they're like, sit down and talk about it you know like um it it feels like a way for it to so naturally progress to a place where everybody's working together and hopefully benefiting each other and, and then it doesn't feel so much like you are thinking necessarily or like going outside of the parameters because you've already been said hey we're gonna try this huge project and i know you, i believe you can do it like what is it gonna take and your job now is to try to make it work and to give feedback on what is it gonna take if it's beyond the scope of what we think you know and come up with some clear answers, clear ideas, clear possibilities. And I, I think that is, I personally think that's a really fun game to play, but I'm not everybody, you know? So that's where for me, I talk about it. I'm like, oh yeah, resource management is super fun, but it isn't not fun for everybody. It can be really intimidating for others too. How do you balance utilizing people's skills or actually, let me wind that back. Pull back the... Pull, let's pull that back. Back the wrist rocket, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting so good. I'm not going to shoot that one. I'm not going to shoot that one. Save let my, it go. I'm going to reload. Save my BB. <laughs> it's really cool for people to participate in the business. Like if you yeah. work for someone and you have an idea that you bring to the table and that idea gets adopted, you feel awesome because you get to see something that is from your brain implemented into the reality that you exist mm -hmm. in every day. That's it's rad. It's hard when you're getting ideas that aren't quite jiving mm. as a leader to step back and totally. say, no, and here's why. Yeah. You know, how, how do you handle those situations where people are eager to participate, but they're just off the mark? Where's and the note? I might have had a note about this exact concept. We're going into the phone right now. We'll see. We'll, we'll, see. Just, let's see if I can find saved. it. I can't remember if I did or not. But We're going to find it. If you don't find it, you're going to make it up right now. I mean, I'll try to, dude. Well, I, I can't remember exactly offhand, but there's a way to like say no in a positive way and then redirect. So I guess like this whether I get it exactly right as to what the note I was trying to take from is like, you can, you can start almost with like, it's, it's the reversal of a positive sandwich, but it's like say, saying yes to like the enthusiasm and the care and then going into your no with your specific clarity around why. And it doesn't have to be huge, um, a huge explanation, like an over explanation, right? It can just be like, oh, I see where you're going with that. And you're kind of, you're attempting to like meet them where they're at, right? That's not going to work for us. And here's why hopefully we've done a good job, either values wise, quality control wise, systematically, like, Hey, that kind of is going to tweak the system in a way where it doesn't work or does, you know, doesn't, it doesn't go against our value, whatever the case may be. Um, but I like this part of what you said. Let's see if we can work that into another idea and check back in. Something to that effect is I think really powerful because it allows the person who's maybe trying to give the advice to learn something, to still participate and to not feel like you're just completely dismissive of their concept altogether. You know, I think, I think there's something that can be really powerful there and really helpful. Um, anyway, that's, that's like the first thing that came to mind when you were talking about that. Yeah. But again, you have to know what you're attempting, right? You know, to my point earlier, thinking outside of the box 
might require you as a leader to be like, you know what? I don't know. Like, let me think on that for a minute or let's talk about, let's talk through together. Like what happens when we start down this path? Like, what are we doing together? You know? And I think that's, even that's powerful too. Yeah. Even if it comes to a no at the end, the person again learned with you, you can still learn in real time and come to a conclusion like, hey, you actually, this isn't going to work. Here's why. And everybody again feels more connected. So, I mean, both of those I think are valid answers. Yo, let me think on that. Or let's walk through step by step if we start down this path based on your suggestion. Yeah. The explanation is huge for right. people. Gives you an opportunity to build cultural continuity. Yeah. Um, and I think people are, well, what should happen. Yeah. People are okay. It's, it's easier to swallow a no if there is reasoning around it and if that sure. reasoning is thoughtful and comes from a place where people can actually sink their teeth into. And then what you should see stretched out over time is no's will become less frequent, not because you're not holding to your standards, but because your team is bringing more culturally aligned ideas yeah. to the table because they are more aware of what's going on. Absolutely. And they're just, you know, they're, dude, I have a, I have a great quote. See, Hang it's on. Time. Like, grab your, time. time to grab your phone. He's going to grab his phone. He's going to do a thing. <laughs> Shut up and dance with me. Shut up and sing the song. Because some of these things are, are bringing up in, in me the, the interviewing, right. the ability to tell someone no and, and hold to that. Still holding. These feel like what what we've seen here at Cat and Cloud is like these are foundations of a strong business and a strong culture. Mm -hmm. You can't have a well-defined company culture if the leadership of that culture is a pinball or mm -hmm. one of those freaking noodles blowing in the wind. It's just like, oh, this is happening now. That's happening now. We're all over the place. Like Happy whatever, waving. Whatever's going on. Flammable arm flailing tube guy. And coming from that place of empathy and you want to see your people succeed, it's really hard to tell them, yeah, this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate the enthusiasm. This isn't going to work. But the more you can build that connection, the more people feel actually valued mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and are, and kind of welcome that feedback and welcome that. Um, well, it's like collaboration almost. It's collaboration. Yeah. Even yeah. if you're not physically doing the thing, you're collaborating in concept. And I think that's super powerful. So this is from a little excerpt. I'll paraphrase part of it and I'll read some of it ver ver verbatim. Para paratroop it. It's from Brene Brown's Jeez. Dare to Lead. Mm -hmm. It's a classic in the space if you haven't good read one. it. It's a good one. It's, you could do a lot worse did. as a book. So she's talking about, she's scheduled to speak at this global leadership event for Costco. And... She's in the front of the room, front row, while the CEO of Costco is fielding questions from Costco leaders, you know, like all, all over the world. And the questions were really tough questions. And she makes note that a lot of times when she sees CEOs field questions that are very difficult, they'll just kind of put them aside or zag out of the way and, and do things like, hmm, you know, let me think about that. Or, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's write that down and we'll get back to it later. Or like, well, that's one way to look at it. And she was struck because in this particular instance, the CEO did none of that. He addressed everything directly and said, you know, like, got asked a hard question? Yes, we did make that decision here's why it happened or no, we're not going in this direction and here's how we came to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. And she was just one, just impressed by the candor. And she was also a little stressed. She's like, damn, I have to get on stage after this open question and answer session. And these people are going to be bristly. Like they're going to yeah. be pissed because they just heard a bunch Some of people, shit that yeah. they don't fucking want to hear from the guy who's the leader of the company. So when Craig was done, the audience leapt to their feet clapping and cheering i was shocked i turned to the woman sitting next to me and said that was really hard he did not give them the answers they were looking for why is everyone cheering 
she smiled and said, at Costco, we clap for the truth. Oh, that's cool. And that's just kind of built into their company culture that uh, they value above more so than hearing what they want to hear. Like, they value the truth. This is real talk. This is what we're doing. Yeah, and here are the situations that, that, you know, came. this is how that came to be. Right. And I think we've seen that a lot in our own organization too, especially mm. in the past couple of years, because we've been kind of getting out of that people-pleasing mentality sure. and into taking a more direct step and driving the direction mm. and complex thing it's a complex thing you know asking hard questions giving hard answers telling quote unquote the truth so to speak to where yeah. it's like hey this isn't going to work hey we shouldn't do this hey we can't do this hey this is not you know yeah. this is where we need to go and it's i've had the same experience so mm -hmm. it's like i feel more comfortable than i ever have just being able to stand up and say like yeah this is this is what we're doing right and it's not in a dickish way to where it's like only purely selfish mm -hmm. because it's just what i want to do and not gonna lie that is part of it you know what i mean it's got to be at least a little bit it's got to be don't a, have your own company correct yeah correct and i think just a just a tangent on that for a little bit we did our owner offsite yesterday me you and charles sure got did. together and did some 2024 planning and i i was really pleased i get nervous before these things because my biggest fear with all of us is that we're each of us is personally going to want to go in some sort of different direction. Right. And that could be really frustrating because we're all stressful, equal sometimes. partners. Totally. You know, this means a lot to all of us. Yeah. And if we have some sort of fundamental disagreement in how we think the thing should be, mm -hmm. it's just a lot it to hash tougher. out. Yeah, and it's sure. like, fuck, I don't know if I want to come to work. Like, so fucking Jared wants to do this weird shit. And like, Chuck's over Always here with it, this dude. fucking outer space thing. But I, I thought we did a good job, and I, we started with that question of, you know, like, what do we want this to be for us? Mm -hmm. You know, we've invested a huge amount of our life, like, all of it, essentially. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, all kinda, that. it's all hung on this thing, um, at least monetarily, and, you for know, sure. no, our, our no whole financial plan, situation right? yeah. revolves around this, and, you know, it's kind of the funnel for the decades of passion and work that we've put into the specialty mm -hmm. coffee industry it's all you know through the prism shooting fucking rainbow laser beam into this cat and cloud yeah, thing it's all kind of coming this direction and starting from that question of like cool what what do we want this what are some of our personal goals in this business like what does it mean to us on a personal level and starting mm -hmm. there and we were all pretty aligned which is great yeah um which is why i think this thing kind of works in the yeah. first place too totally. um but it it felt so comfortable to just kind of get that off the table and be like okay cool we, right. we're all on the now same we page do. yeah that backs and that up so now that we've got our personal thing taken care of because it's such a huge part of our life then we can make decisions again not purely out of selfishness but it's like what is going to benefit this organization mm -hmm. what are great opportunities that could benefit the people in the organization Absolutely, we spent a lot of time on people how do we take the the vision of the whole thing which is very people centric and mm -hmm. cultural centric like how do we push that forward and i like being able to do that and own those things and then do what we did just a half hour ago which mm -hmm. is okay cool you know we're coming in next week the 10th we're going to have our annual goal set we're going to mm -hmm. share those with people we're going to take them behind the scenes on our thought process which we've been kind of doing the whole time we've been doing this yeah um it just feels really good i i don't i don't feel stressed like three years ago i was pretty freaking stressed mm -hmm. i was like we're gonna do this and everyone's like why i know every time <laughs> every time oh prove it prove yeah. prove your reasoning to us this, before we decide it's okay right yeah and i was kind of i was ruminating on that mm -hmm. and in the past, we'd kind of talked about having the right or wrong people. Yeah. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, eh, definitely a lot of that slash most of it is actually on us and like not how you and not hold your yeah ideas. Yeah, how we approach leadership in general. Mm -hmm. Because I I think I come from this place that's more I don't, it sounds like a corny term because a lot of people say it, but it's like an abundance-based mindset mm -hmm. to where there's a lot of people out there who can do really special things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there who have a lot of potential, and depending on the environment you put them in, 
they can rise to the occasion if they're challenged in the right way and feel like they're a part of the thing, or they can just turn off if they don't. Right. So it's hard for me to say right now we have the perfect crew. It, I think we have good people. I right. think we have amazing people, and I think we're doing a better job than we've ever done before sure. about driving the company. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect. You know, we've got a lot to learn. Uh, Hopefully always. better to come. Hopefully yeah. our better days are in always. front of us. But I also think that like looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, a lot of the things that we saw that we thought was wrong with the quote unquote people were actually just reflections of our Either leadership. Insecurities and leaders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, how it felt to be trying to figure out what was best and not necessarily being hyper confident that it was all going to work. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. That, I think that comes with lack of experience and it never fully goes away, but you definitely get a lot better at feeling like, yeah, this is the best, best call for what we got right now. And that's what we're going to do. I think I actually, yeah, I feel the same way. And when that, when our planning and everything goes, you know, it's aligned and we have ourselves, even if there's not super clear, like this is exactly what we do to get where we're going. It just makes it more fun to activate on those next pieces. And you know, that's where, again, you're going into resource management. Like, what are we going to do? That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Who do I get to play with in the next year? And, and how? Yeah, and, the how is the part that you can figure out together. Yeah. That's where everybody can contribute. Right. And, which is how, not knowing how is what makes work fun. Right. If you knew how, it'd be kind of boring. You're like, okay, well, I know how this works. It's right. like rinse and repeat that. And I'm doing that five years from now. Never and, entertaining. Yeah, once you're, once you're on, once you're in this kind of space, it's just like, ooh. Like, fuck, dude, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Good. I know what the idea is. I, I close my eyes yeah, and I can, I can picture see a it. thing. Yeah. I don't actually know how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the playing part of it. Yeah. That's, it's really fun. That's the fun stuff. That's like, oh, cool. Let's try this <laughs> out. Cool. It doesn't work. Try that out. That doesn't work either. Right. And you probably try a lot of things that don't work. How do we, where do we go? How do we get here from interviewing? Well, we, I think we got there from, the way it works in my brain is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're finding out what people did, talking about what people did, yeah. but then also talking Makes about motivation. interviewing in some way, shape, or form is like having a hard conversation. Oh, and because yeah, the yeah, onus yeah. of the whole conversation is on the pe person being interviewed, so you got to be comfortable right. with kind of with just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. I guess there's that other part of that too, which is knowing. Obviously, there's a job description, but knowing what you're going to want to get out of the candidate for the job too. And I guess that's the fun part of trying, you know, you're looking in some capacity to the future of like, okay, if this person is going to be stepping into this role based on this conversation and hopefully some of the history of understanding them at the workplace. Um, but if not, even if somebody's getting hired from the outside in, you're going to take your best guess on like, how does this person fit? What kind of expectation might I have moving forward in terms, in terms of where we're going with this person, you know, are they the best fit? So what made you guys hire Eli? Eli, a number of reasons. I mean, he's been, he's been a great learner over the years and absorber of our culture. And he's always wanted to participate in building connection to our culture in his, in his own way all the time. Whether it was, I want to put on a latte art competition. I want to bring people to an event. I want to go do events somewhere else. I'd love to, you know, uh, show up at latte art competitions myself and compete. All of his, his core motivation always was, I think this place is awesome. I think more people should, you know, work with us, be a part of it, connect with us because it's the place to be. And so that, I mean, in its core, that's a big part of it. He's been here for six years, consistently improving all the time, showing that he genuinely is interested in pursuing that role. And, and again, that's the other part. He, he did his own research. He connected with multiple people who have worked in the position before, did like pre-interviews with them in his own way. You know, not, not Mark, who was actually doing the interview, but, you know, Gene and other people. He looked at the job description. He asked questions about like, came in and was like, this is the job I want in this company. He's also been expressing interest in this kind of work for a few years now. So you know, there's, there's props to him, like a huge amount of growth since he first came as well. That is absolutely clear. Um, it was clear to me and I think you had seen it too. And, and Mark hadn't sat down with him in a long time, just experienced him really well. And so to sit in that interview and Mark was like, well, that was really, really good. And I'm like, fuck yeah, it was. 
you know, like well, well deserved. Um, and again, there was a lot of other great interviews too. But I mean, at the end of the day, like Eli very clearly spoke to and exactly to your point, like in terms of how he's acted, what he's done, how he's participated, there's a through line to what he says, what he's done and who he is that absolutely represents not only the company, but the job and the requirements of literally the job description and what we need somebody to be in that position. And he's the dude. There's something also special about him that he can, he can make you feel confident in yourself and what you're doing and make you feel like you're doing a really great job. And I think that's, and, and how, that's like a quiet killer in that way, positively. So that was your, that was your long winded short answer. <laughs> big ups, dude. Big ups to Eli. It's freaking awesome. Big so ups. Psyched, so psyched for him. Big ups to 2024. Big ups to the beginning of 2024. I, I don't even know where I'm to go. I'm raging, bro. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm already feel behind. Uh, yeah, as Not in an unhealthy way, but I just see so much potential. So much yeah. potential. Yeah, that you put on the Matrix goggles and all of a sudden you're like, I just live in that lifestyle, dude. I don't even need to put on the glasses. I'm just, I'm just there. I don't even need to take a pill. Dude. Agents don't even Red, stand blue, a chance, matter. dude. They know I'm just fucking breathing. The walls are coming in and out. Yeah. I'm just like pff, dropping bullets on the ground. I'm the one. I am the one. Neo. Dude. There's freaking, there's no chance. Dude, great talking to you, brother. You too, man. We did it. Let's get back into the flow. I'm into it. Okay, bye. Peace. Hey everyone, that's the podcast for the week. Thanks so much for listening. If you heard something that inspired you, let us know or tell a friend. These are the types of connections that are the most important to us and that we seek to create every day. If there's something you heard and you want to know more about, send us an email to podcast at catandcloud.com or head to our website, catandcloud.com slash podcast and let us know. While you're on our site, check out everything we have to offer. Dive deep into one of our single origin coffees or pick up a little treat for yourself. We have something for everyone, so check it out. Also, find us in the usual places. YouTube, Instagram, we're always there sharing amazing things. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for being awesome. We'll be back next week.